Five minutes after 10 o'clock. It may be gloomy out there, but it's pretty bright in here. We have two bright ladies that have joined us. Helen Green and Stacey Monroe are in the studio. Helen is the spokesperson for the American Cancer Society of Marion County, and Stacy is a cancer survivor and a member of the American Cancer Society Relay for Life in Ocala event leadership team. They're talking to us about opportunities to volunteer with the Cancer Society, and um, let me say good morning to both of you first. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. We met before thank you for reminding us and uh, <laughs> we we crossed paths at a few different times right right do you know what my mom had cancer my mom survived cancer she's passed away now but she lived maybe 12 years after she was first um mm -hmm. through the, all of that therapy and everything and uh, i went to with her to i think two different relays for life Mm -hmm. I, think, yes. I think we did two of them. One was in Citrus County someplace, because that's where she lived. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a nighttime thing. Yes. And, right. And she just loved it. It was just, it was just so much... It was a big deal for her to, to be able to walk and say she was a survivor. So, uh, so thank you for what you do. You, you, you make a big difference in the world. And maybe you don't realize it. And maybe you never get the message back that you do. But you do. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. doing that. Do you, are you both volunteers? Mm-hmm. Yes. And and how long have you been volunteering? I have been. I think this is my second year. Okay. And um, th wh what was it that got you to volunteer? I felt like there was a need. Uh -huh. The uh, we I'm actually the chair of the board here in Marion County for um, well it's Marion County but about two or three years ago the American Cancer Society consolidated their Lake Sumter and Marion offices and. Lo it's located in the villages okay, okay so the office here closed and i think because that happened a lot of people thought they're gone and they're not the people are still here the resources are still available and the programs still exist so the board has uh, a task of making sure that those programs grow and that we get volunteers to facilitate the programs one, so one of the things that uh, we, we've learned is that when we donate to the American Cancer Society, it's not all for research. Sometimes it could be for prosthetics or uh, for for other actual hands-on things. Wigs, wigs, wigs come up mm -hmm. uh, every now and then. Uh, so I mean, it's amazing that we don't even. And it stays here, right? Doesn't it stay in our community when we give to our community? Yes, a portion of it does, but the actual resource room and the the items that you're talking about, uh -huh. that's all located in the villages now. But it's, I mean, it's not far, and that's right, kind of in between all three counties. Okay. So it just kind of okay. made sense okay. to put it there. Have you have you both survived cancer? Not to get too personal, but I have not, uh, except for a little skin cancer I had okay. on, on my face. Okay. But other than that, I'm good. I had that too on my nose. I had a little bit. Uh, and and uh, Stacy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And and can we get a little personal? How sure. how is your cancer? My cancer is gone. Completely gone. Yes. And, and what what type of cancer? Did I you had have? cervical cancer. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the worst. One of the worst, right? To, well, to get diagnosed. To get diagnosed, yes. Most of the time, it's caught late. Luckily, I went to the doctor every year. So oh, thank God for it you. It was caught, and it was a rarer, um, aggressive type. So. Luckily, I'm good. How, how long did it take to be good? How long did it um, take? I was diagnosed June of 2013 and finished my treatment in November. So since then, the, the, I'm still this, no evidence this past of November? disease. No, of 2013. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. Three and a half wow. years. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. you've got a very good attitude. I'm, I'm guessing you've always had that. I try. <laughs> and they say, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but they say that helps. To, it's in, a large part of it. Healing. It's a large part of it. So as volunteers, do you help encourage people to be more optimistic? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah? How do you do that? Well, for instance, um, it, you just, by talking to them, by, being by a friend. answering questions, sort of, yes, being a friend. And um, I have to put in a plug for colorectal cancer awareness that's this month the month of march and you know a lot of people are very apprehensive about having that 
particular test done because it's not fun. And but there are other ways. But you of, go to sleep for forty five minutes, I don't know. you? No, that part's easy. That's the easy part. Yes. But there are simpler ways of doing a test. So we're just encouraging them if they're sitting on the fence to, you know, do Bad it. Bad choice of words. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so little things like that, just to encourage them to get screened. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh. and if they have been diagnosed, you know, just just treat them like your family. Oh, mm-hmm. that's sweet. I like that. Uh, one of the um, main things for volunteers is to uh, pair up with a breast cancer patient under your programs and services. And that's really nice to do something like that for support correct and we're encouraging people if they are interested and they are a survivor to call the 800 number and and say that you want to sign up to be a part of the reach to recovery program Mm -hmm. because people need people to talk to and sometimes it's easier for them to pick up the phone and talk to somebody instead of having to seek out a support group or a clinical yes, counselor. They probably like won't right. seek it out. Is mm-hmm. and the thing is, they can get help twenty four seven, even on Christmas. If you have a oh. question or you're having a hard time, really? you can call the eight hundred number and you will get a person to talk to. And what is that number? Okay, the one eight hundred number. The one eight hundred number that. is. <laughs> One eight hundred two seven seven two three four five. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so, if if somebody wants to be a volunteer, tell me what they might what what can they look forward to? What are the, what can they expect? Well, if you want to be a driver, okay, it's road to recovery, and you go and there's a, something called a service match uh-huh. on the website on the ACS dot org website. And you can sign up for whatever days are convenient for you, whatever times are convenient for you, and they match you with a patient who might need a ride to an appointment oh. on those particular dates and times. But there's training that you that you go through through the American Cancer Society, so they prepare you for whatever role you've decided to volunteer for. Oh, okay, okay. And and uh, is there a number that you're looking for, or are volunteers a- anybody? Can volunteer no matter what. We have immediate needs yeah, for, yeah. for instance, for drivers and for licensed cosmetologists to expand the road to recovery and the look good, feel better programs. Oh, help me understand that. What is what is that about? The, what is a, a volunteer cosmetologist? What does he or she do? Well, they would help facilitate the look good, feel better program where they teach the women who are going through cancer or you know pre or post right. how to apply their makeup if they've lost their hair they show them how to use the cute scarves and the turbans uh-huh. to put them on stylishly yeah, yeah, and i've yeah. actually witnessed the after effects of one of these programs we hosted one at our center here in ocala one year and the women after they were finished came walking out into that lobby they looked like movie stars and wow. they were just all beaming mm-hmm. from ear to ear it was wow. it was fantastic wow. It was really. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like, yay! I, 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 going back to my mom, I remember she had, she didn't lose her hair to the point where she was bald, but she, hair was important to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's important to every girl, it I is. think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, Robin and I do music. We have a song actually called "Hair Is Important to a Girl" that Robin sings, and and uh, it's it's about that very. It's about the hair locks of love program. Yes, is that what it's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about the locks Larry of love program. It. Yeah, I wrote it, but she sings it. <laughs> Because this sounds weird coming from me. (laughs) Uh, When you have the drivers volunteer, you do a background check on them, make sure they have insurance and reliable transportation. Yes, Yes, absolutely. Well, I could do that. I might do that. That sounds like something I could do. Where where do you drive to? Depends. Gainesville? Not necessarily. No? It could be somebody right here in town that needs a ride to one of their oncology appointments. You drive your own car? So you're like free Uber. Right. Yes. <laughs> I could be a free Uber driver. Uber for and a you, good cause. Yes. And, and, yes. And, you know, we do things like we thank the drivers. We continually thank the volunteers. And at a recent luncheon that we did for the drivers, they were telling their stories, some of their stories about mm-hmm. the different situations they had been in Absolutely. with patients. And, and you form relationships, Well, and when you're, cause too. Because when you're driving, 
in the car, you're taught, you know, people are open. You're Always like, talking. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah it's giving them, so you're not only giving them a ride, I think, to their appointment, but it's therapy. It's someone to talk to right. and understand. And right. I think it's. And, and you have something called the American Cancer Society Hope Lodge. Oh, I've Hope not Lodge heard of that. Go ahead. Hope Lodge is in, our, their closest Hope Lodge is in Gainesville. Um, it's where cancer patients and their families mm-hmm. uh, can stay while they're receiving treatment. Uh, we're the only state, we have three. I think Jacks- the one in Jacksonville is, is underway. Almost, yeah, so there's a Hope Lodge in Tampa, there's a Hope Lodge in Gainesville, and then the Hope Lodge in right. Jacksonville will be mm-hmm. ready. We're the only state to have three. Um, it's a wonderful, and that's another place they're always looking for volunteers you can take dinners into hope lodge church groups Mm -hmm. provide dinners and they're always looking for donated items in fact this month at our relay for life team party one of the challenges was to bring in items to donate to hope lodge so uh, it was it was great Uh, nina kelly our event lead went Uh um last friday and delivered a car load full of paper products and coffee, candy, you name it. Oh, really? um, so they're always looking for items like that, but it's an amazing place. So, really is. So we can volunteer our things. Like if we can't volunteer our time, time like maybe maybe you have a wish list of stuff we can yes. help you out with. Mm-hmm. Okay, let, let me take a break and we'll we'll come back and continue this conversation. Um, Helen Green and Stacy Monroe are here. We're talking about volunteer opportunities and in general everything that the American Cancer Society of Marion County does and uh, how we can help them as well. Plus, there's a couple of websites I think we have on the list to give out as well. We will take a little break and we will be right back. WOCA gets results. Yeah, I, I love WOCA because they're fun to listen to. They're Larry and Robin start the day fresh and they're funny. They're informative. They've also helped us with Therapeutic Riding Association getting us players for our golf tournament fundraisers and so they help the kids that are handicapped make our community a better place to live and they've been a very good partner for us wouldn't want to have it any other way WOCA gets results Mr. Webster defines a caterer as someone who provides food and refreshment. Whether you are looking to provide an excellent meal and a refreshment for a small group, party, business meeting, or a large get-together, Honey Baked Ham, 2709 Southwest 27th Avenue in Ocala, will provide the delicious breakfast, lunch, or dinner items of your choice. No need for you to fret over the details. Let Honey Baked Ham handle it all. Call Honey Baked Ham today at 352-861-0011. That's 861-0011. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Monday, plenty of clouds along with a couple of showers and a heavier thunderstorm in places with highs mainly in the 70s. For Monday night, cloudy with rain and a thunderstorm early and remaining mostly cloudy late with lows in the 50s to near 60. For Tuesday, clouds breaking for some sunshine. A breezy, somewhat cooler day with a high in the mid-60s in the northern part of the zone to the low and mid-70s in the south. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. PPIR is a networking group formed to serve the realtor and small business community. It primarily serves the real estate and construction industry, but is open to all businesses that provide any service or product to the real estate business community. PPIR has no membership dues or fees for attendees. The watchwords are keep it simple and maximize networking time. PPIR chapters generally meet once a month after business hours. For the information on this, call 352-615-9412 or go to events at PPIRevents.com. PPIR, professional people in real estate. All right, 19 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Helen Green and Stacey Monroe are in the studio. We're talking about cancer, the American Cancer Society, and volunteers uh, and volunteer opportunities. Um, I, w- I wanted to ask you, uh, Stacey, mm-hmm. um, when you were first diagnosed, what th- that experience m- makes you unique in being able to help people who are first diagnosed? Because unless you've been first diagnosed, you don't know what they're going no, through. No, you don't. So how, so what, first, I guess, what was that like when you were first diagnosed? Did it hit you like they, like a brick or whatever they say? Yes, it did. Yeah. When you hear those three words, you have cancer, it's life-changing. And it doesn't matter how, my, you know, there's obviously, not that there's good or bad cancers, yeah, but no yeah. matter the minority of it it's life-changing yeah, yeah it is it alters everything and it does it's like your legs are kicked out from underneath you and it's kind of numb 
And so how do you handle the conversation with somebody who's first diagnosed? Because everybody doesn't have the success that you experience. You might you might speak to somebody who's first diagnosed who won't be around much right. longer. And that is hard and it's almost there's that little survivor guilt kind of you know it's it's a hard oh, don't ever feel yeah no guilty. it's a it's a hard thing to to process i mean mm. you feel very you just try to give them the encouragement um answer any questions that you can what is the is can you get tell us some of the questions i have or or, or are they kind of like uh, is it obvious like if i was to guess the question it would mm -hmm. be will i live that's going to be a right. question right yeah um well, I'll tell you, one of my um, very dear friends and clients said to me, she was a cancer survivor as well, and she said that when she was diagnosed with cancer, her doctor told her that you're diagnosed with cancer, but the big C can also mean cure, not just cancer. So, oh, wow. Smart doctor. It's yeah. wonderful. And I held on to that a lot, and I encourage other people too. I mean, you want to be realistic but hopeful. Mm -hmm. um, so well, okay one question i would have mm -hmm. and i hope i don't have to ask this ever for real but i would have this question what should i do uh about the the people who say here's what i found on the internet here's oh, what i read in a stay book off of Google. here's what i heard <laughs> um if you if you, dr if you drink guacamole juice you're going to be cured all, all those things yeah i um, I think being healthy is wonderful. It obviously makes a big difference. Your attitude makes a big difference. But really, you just need to listen to your doctors. Yes. Um, reach out to those one eight the you know the American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. Reach out to people that know what they're talking about. Not people because every one is different. Every cancer is different. Even if you have the same cancer, it's going to be different. You have to look for information in the right places See, because that would be the hard part if i was volunteering let's say as a driver probably the only thing i could do mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't i could drive a car but the conversation would be harder than driving if i right. if i'm with somebody going through cancer and and he or she's asking me I'm going to say, you know, I don't know. You have to talk. And that's okay. That's okay to say I don't yeah, know. This yeah, it's good to be honest. You'd rather somebody be honest than say, oh, I know how you feel. Or, yeah. you know, I, I, you, because you don't. Or have you, have you, have you looked at that? I got a website for you. That would be a horrible thing to do to somebody. Because mm -hmm. you, you're back saying, you know what? I'm just a driver, but I know more than your doctor. That's kind of what that's saying, isn't yeah, well, it? Yeah, but you, in that, in that instance, you could say, I hear that the, not only do they offer this road to recovery, but there's a 1-800 number that can always offer you support, information, um, lead them in the right direction. I think maybe that's the best thing. You know, speak of what you can, but yeah, then lead yeah. them in the right direction. Again, it, it just, it, I'm sorry, it just shows how much of an amazing job it is you do, because it's hard to think of putting yourself in that circumstance. It is hard. And the cancer affects everyone, every age, every ethnicity. And when you do your relay for life, you encourage everyone to come, not just the women who are breast cancer survivors. No, it's all right. cancers. All relay cancers. for life is all cancer. There is a specific breast cancer walk in October as well. But relay for life is all cancers, all ages, and all people. It's not just survive. I mean, we want the survivors to come because it's to celebrate them. But it's very impactful even if you're not a survivor to come so helen what can we do to help you what 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 do you need anything this is huge having us here today thank you very much for that oh you're welcome and just to just the awareness part of it just to get the word out to other people that you know if you if you want to volunteer we can give you something to do mm -hmm. depending on what you would like to do you uh -huh. know just share all the different opportunities that are available um, you can help with fundraising. We have all kinds of fundraisers. We've kind of expanded that. We can help with that, Robin. Yeah, we can help with fundraising. We're, we're, we're trying to appeal to different interests. Mm -hmm. So last year we did the first Bark for Life down in the villages. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. And that you bring your fun. dog. And mm -hmm. it. I wasn't there, but... We have one coming up in yes, May. we do, right here. Ocala. And what do you do? You bring your dog? Yeah. You bring your dog. How does that help? It's like, well, it's a fundraiser. It's like the Relay for Life, but it's a Bark for Life. So right. it involves animals. And, well, because animals are a large part of their. How does that make money? You mean you, you bring your dog on a couple dollars? <laughs> well, again, it's there's teams, there's sponsors, there's um, fundraising. How about Busking and, for Life? Have you ever had a Busking for Life event? 
We can do that. <laughs> we, we, can, we can help with that. Do you know what busking is? I was just going to say, no, that's I a new have word no for idea. me. Bus, <laughs> busking that. is what, like a street performer <laughs> p- performing music for tips. <laughs> that's, oh. that's called busking. Oh, I, I didn't know word. that. Yes, so we thank can, you. We busked for the Literacy Council, yeah. and we raised 7500 something dollars. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, if we, if we were doing <laughs> it for ourselves... Nobody, Come on. Come on does. down. Yes. <laughs> but when the public knows that you're do- doing it for a good cause, mm-hmm. they'll put lots of money yes, in the guitar case and all, and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's that's needed. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you've got your Relay for Life coming up in April. Yes. Relay for Life is coming up April 28th. Um, we have another, a new location again this year, which is so exciting. We're okay. going to be at the Brick City Park. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Not too far from St. John's, right? Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And it's a beautiful park, beautiful track. Um, it's going to be. It's going to be great. Because last year we were at West Marion, so we want to make sure everyone is aware of the location change. Um, and what are the what are the events that would we would participate in? Or? Well, that event the event goes from six p.m. to midnight. It, our Ocala event is a six-hour event instead of overnight. Right. Um, the survivor dinner is 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. Registration usually starts about 4, 4.30, I believe. Um, again, much better to be registered online. You, know, you can register in ahead advance, of time. In mm-hmm. advance, you encourage yes. that. We do encourage that, although we don't turn survivors away, but we mm-hmm, do encourage mm-hmm, them mm-hmm. to register. So the dinner is at 5, and then we have our opening ceremony and kickoff at 6, p- uh, 6 p.m., Mm-hmm. Luminary ceremony is around nine, I believe, yeah. which is amazing. That's a pretty thing with the bags. It's beautiful. I always wonder who had that idea to put a candle in a bag. Mm-hmm. You know, That's they're, a, they're it's great. A, it's an amazing yeah. thing, but you would have thought, wouldn't the bag burn down? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very impactful to see it, yeah. and uh, we do a luminary slideshow. So if mm-hmm. people are interested in um, purchasing luminaries, that can be done online or through any volunteer for Relay. You can um, send in a picture. So there, someone's picture can be on the slideshow. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's wow. a beautiful okay. tribute for. Right. And and the one of the reasons to register in advance is that you provide every survivor with a T-shirt and a medal. Survivors get a T-shirt, a survivor medal, a goodie bag, and a wonderful dinner. And dinner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's very nice. All right. So you need uh, any sponsors? Do you need people? Yes. To, yeah. We sure do. We need sponsors. We need teams. We need participants. Okay. So that's what we need to end this. Co- and and entertainment. With. <laughs> and entertainment. <laughs> entertainment. Well, we're not exactly your normal entertainment. We could we could be busking on the side yes. though. Yes. We could help you out with yep. that. Sure. You can have a busking team. Yes. You can have a WOCA team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we could do that. We yes, could do all of yes. that. Uh, for the listeners, that's this is exactly why uh, uh, we're on the air right now talking about this, is so that you can put your thinking hats on, to use a, a phrase there, and, and figure out a way to help out, maybe have some fun at the same time and raise some money. Do you want to direct them to a phone number, to a website? What's, what's a good way for them to take this further? Um, we do have... Um, oh. Relay, well, it's the RelayForLife.org website. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can search for events in your area. I believe it's backslash Ocala. But you're right. All you have yeah. to do is just... It, RelayForLife.org. It says, and okay. it'll say search for events. Okay. Right. okay. And you'll find it. Um, every All the information that you'll need will be on the website. You can register there. Survivors, teams, participants. You can join a team that's okay. already existing um sponsorship information is there as well they can always contact um karen knighton is our um acs uh organizer yes <laughs> <laughs> you know what we can do we can we can put this community infor- event we have a we have a folder right here it's kind of buried but that's our public service announcement folder and we read things from there on a rotating okay. basis every I'll morning that to you. so we'll make sure that's all in there and oh, we'll great. we'll keep in other words this won't be the only time this is mentioned we want to make sure we mention this a lot that's um, awesome. And for the listeners, uh, call us if you need any of that information repeated, including the websites. Plus, this interview will be on Facebook and YouTube by 2 o'clock this afternoon. So okay. you'll Great. be able to use it and share it. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. Thank you very much. The bigger thank you is for what you're doing. You're making a huge difference in our community, and uh, there's no way to thank you for that. That's just awesome. And, and congratulations on being a survivor. Thank you. 
don't have don't have the survivor's guilt. You, you, <laughs> no. You're supposed to be alive. Yes, yeah. Uh, thank you, Helen, for all you do. Yes, thank you, Helen. Helen. Marvelous. Thank you both, yes. All right, we'll be right back. This is WOCA. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. It's not clear if the White House will respond. Congressional committees have set a deadline for today to see evidence of President Trump's claim that President Obama wiretapped his phones during the campaign. Democratic Congress.